All right, I think I have the free resource to end all free resources when it comes to Bible study. So you want to make sure you tune into this video because I'm giving you something free that's going to change the way you study scripture. Okay, so listen, Lagos Bible Software is my favorite study resource as a pastor, even in my personal devotional time, Lagos has been a game changer for me. And let me tell you, it's free, y'all. They're giving it away free. I mean, I have some paid resources around it, but the initial portion of Lagos is free to download. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to help you walk through this in a getting started video to get you started as a beginner on the Lagos Bible software. And it starts right here at the home page. Just go to Lagos.com. Yes, Lagos.com. And you'll come to this home page. If you click on this download Lagos button, you can click on the use online section. Now, there's a download that you can download for the actual software itself, but it takes up a lot of space on your computer. So I'm going to start you out on the use online version. Uh, you'll click on this button and hit the create account button. You will create an account here in this section. I've, I've already created one. So I'm going to go ahead and sign into the one that I have created and it will sign me in. And it's just as simple as that. Watch this. It's going to take me straight to the page. Boom. So we are in, ready to go. And this is your home page here at Lagos. Now, for the getting started guide, I am a Bible and book nerd, as you can see, currently on Bible nerd on my shirt. So we're going to start with the library. We're going to start with what they got in the library. Now, Lagos gives you 70 free resources from the jump, 70 ones that you have not paid for. OK, and I want to just walk through some of these resources and kind of give you my top resources here in Lagos. There's 70 in here. But I'm going to give you about five or six of them that are really good resources that you need to make sure you bookmark as you look through here. And I'm going to start with the Bible versions. OK, now here's a, a power user tip here for Lagos. If you click on this hamburger menu, once you hit the library button, you'll see that you're able to filter it by different titles. And here you can filter it by type of book. As you can see, there are 10 Bibles that are in here. Uh, there are two lectionaries. We can talk about that later, two encyclopedias. So they have the type of book in here already waiting for you, ready to go. Now, I'm going to start with the Bibles because that's where we all should start, right? And I'm going to say this. Not many of these are ones you're going to be able to use or want to use. OK, because the Greek New Testament, uh, you had to have taken Greek in order to read that. But there are at least three of them that I would suggest to you. I'm going to start by clicking here with the uh, CSB. The CSB is the Christian Standard Bible. It's a good translation of the Bible. And I think that it's one of the ones that I use as a favorite. And as you can see, it has the entire text here. If you watched our last video, I'm going to put it up in the cards. Make sure you watch that video on the ESB, ESV Study Bible. But the CSB also has similar features because it does have cross references. Remember we talked about that in our ESV study Bible video. If you didn't watch that video again, click on that card and you'll be able to go back and see it. But here you, you're able to see that it has cross references. Some of the cross references that I mentioned in the previous video, and then you click on that cross reference and Oh, it goes right to the cross reference. You don't have to turn to it in your physical Bible. Now, that cross reference here as a default goes to the King James version. I know it's some King James folks who may be watching this video, but there may be some other folks who are like, I don't read that anymore. 
Well, you don't have to stay on that. Here's another power user tip for a lot of guys. See this little double slash here? It's called parallel resources. If you click on it, uh, you can go down and go to the Bible version that you really want to see. And that's this one. And it takes you to that Genesis 1-1 text. The other tab keeps that John verse open. And you can continue to go to different cross-references. Now, the unfortunate thing about the online version is when you click on this, it's going to continue to open up that King James. If you don't want it, you just go over and click on the other version. Well, here's that other Colossians uh, text that we talked about, uh, Colossians 1.18, where it talks about Jesus being uh, the firstborn from the dead um, and having a pre preeminent place uh, in God's family order. So, uh, yeah, the, fa the CSB is a good version of the Bible. I would also commend to you the Lexham English version of the Bible here in this free software has a good translation there as well. And then again, the third one, I would say, if you are so inclined is the King James. I think it has some great language and it certainly uh, takes you all the way back to Sunday school for some of us. So being able to use that one is going to be clutch for sure. Now, if you want to just go back and look at some of your other resources in your library, we just went through the Bibles, which I think are the first important resources, but another set of resources that I think are going to be important for you. And again, you can filter by type are going to be your encyclopedias. Now, these are clutch, super clutch. This is probably outside of the Bibles and outside of some of the commentaries, probably my favorite resource in Lagos because it helps me understand people, places, and times in the Bible. Uh, what are you talking about, Pastor John? Well, let's start with Easton's because Easton's is probably the more basic of the two. So if I'm like, well, I read in the beginning was the word, but what does word really mean in um, the Bible? I just click the word and look at what happens when I typed in the word, it showed that the Greek had Lagos on there. Uh, even if you don't know Greek, it has Lagos on there. And it says it's one of the titles of our Lord found only in the writings of John. As such, Christ is the revealer of God. And this is one thing you found out here. You found out that this is only found in John's writings. John's the only one who talks about the divine Lagos, talks about Jesus as the divine Lagos in John 1 and 1 John 1 and Revelation 19, 13. This is great information to know that no other writer in the New Testament uses this of Jesus. And we see this happen in Easton's Bible Dictionary. It's one paragraph. It gives us one paragraph of information here in this text. So what else we got here? Uh, we see here that the word of God in Hebrew 4, 12 is a different word. So we have the word who is Lagos, Jesus, and then we have the word of God. In Hebrews 4.12, we, we learned that the word of God is sharp and powerful. Uh, and it, it cuts to the bone, the scripture says. So there's two different instances here of word in Easton's. And we see that the one in John 1.1 1, 1 is talking about Jesus as the divine Lagos. So it can't be talking about scripture as the word, but... But John uses it of Jesus himself. You know, there are some who want to translate it and say, well, the word was with God. They're talking about the word of God. Well, no, contextually, John is saying something very different. He's talking about Christ himself. And that's where you find out about it in Easton's Bible Dictionary. Now, you remember the parallel resources I talked about with the Bibles? Same thing happens with Bible dictionaries. Now, there isn't one here, but if you do go back, to your library, you'll see that Lexham might not have an entry for Word because that parallel resource didn't show up. But what about what we just found out? Lagos. Oh, Le Lexham has an entry for Lagos. So the Greek word simply means word. And then it goes through a long history of what word means, both in the Hebrew and in the Greek context. I mean, this is a lengthy article. Again, I told you, you can spend an entire day just dealing with one verse based on the resources, these free resources that they are giving 
to you. I'm not going to walk through this, but there is a first century understanding of the word that this article goes through that is pretty lengthy, which I say to you all, you probably want to start with Easton's. Uh, Lexham is probably a deeper dive on many things, but you probably want to start with the Lexham uh, with the Easton Bible Dictionary, not Lexham. OK, so we got Bibles, we got dictionaries and all this stuff is free, y'all feel like you're robbing somebody. Right. But the folks at Lagos want to make sure that they bless the community with these free resources. OK, one, two more. I'm going to give you two more resources uh, before I let you go. OK, because I think that this software is going to take a deeper dive on some other videos. But I think just giving you all the library here is going to be helpful. So if you click on type and Bible cross reference index, remember we talked about cross references in the study Bibles. I'm going to close some of these tabs. You can close these out once you're done with them. Um, I like to try to keep my stuff clean. So uh, for here, what you're going to see is, and you can move these around. So if you got two tabs, you want to put here. Uh, here's another power user tip. We're going to talk about this in a later episode, but you can put them on top of each other, put them side by side. These are called layouts and you can put in different layouts, but this treasury of scripture knowledge is another cross reference tool. Now it goes beyond what you see in your study Bible. See in this verse, it has one, two, three. That's Genesis. We're going to go to John one. We found what two in the CSB. Well, here in the treasury scripture knowledge, you see way more for the beginning. So you see Genesis one, you see Proverbs three. It talks about wisdom and the Lord possessing wisdom in the beginning. If you go to Proverbs eight, 22 to 31 and just substitute Jesus for wisdom, you're going to find that that says that. Jesus is wisdom personified in that verse. So the treasure scripture knowledge goes far beyond what the study Bibles go to in the text. So you can go through and click on each one of these cross references and get even more cross references for that portion of the text. So when you go to the TSK or the treasure scripture knowledge, you're going to find that each one of these sections here, are going to show you verses that might not appear in your regular study Bible. Okay. All right. So let's go to one last piece here. We're going to talk about the study Bible in here. So there is one study Bible in here. I know I told y'all about the ESV study Bible, but here in this particular program, the free version, they have the faith life study Bible. So the same footnotes that you would have in your English standard version appear in this faith life study Bible. And you're going to see it appear all through this chapter one. So all these notes, all these notes from faith life study Bible, which are free for you appear here on the side. And let me give you one more power user tip. If you click on this three dots here and click on link set a and do the same here for this side, look at what happens when you scroll through John. The study Bible scrolls with it. It's going with it. It's moving with it. So uh, this is just a dope program. Uh, we're going to move through beyond the basics, beyond the library next time and talk about the homepage and how you can set up your homepage. And then we're going to talk about how you can actually study scripture using this particular software. I hope you're excited. We're going to talk with you all next go round in the next video. Catch you soon. Well, listen, thank y'all for coming through. I just gave y'all a free resource with all types of tools in it. Hopefully you all are able to dive into that resource. But as we continue through this Logos Bible software series, I hope that as we dive into this software, that you continue to keep in mind that these are just tools that are being used in order for you to understand and know God deeper. Uh, the tools are useless apart from the tool maker. So I want to make sure that I give you these tools, but I want to remind you that it's the God who gives us those tools who's the most important. So as we continue to help you to lead better, to read better, and to live better here at Leading Through Serving, I hope that next time you'll be able to dive into the text with us a little bit deeper 
as we talk about the homepage and then start to dive into some Bible study. We'll see y'all next go round. Hey, I hope that was helpful. Listen, I want you all to subscribe to this channel. I know these resources have been helpful for you. I'm going to walk through Lagos Bible software. By the time you're done, you're going to be an expert in Lagos. You're going to love the program because I love it. And I know that you're going to study your Bible more deeply because you understand how to use this particular tool. So we'll see y'all next go around. Make sure you subscribe, like the video. See y'all in the next video.